In this video, we're going to discuss the trigeminal nerve, also known as cranial nerve 5, which is crucial for facial sensation, such as touch, pain, and temperature, and for controlling the muscles of mastication. We'll begin with an overview, delve into the nerve's origin, and then examine its course and relationships. Following that, we'll outline its terminal branches and functions, detailing the structures it innervates. Additionally, we'll touch on clinical correlations, with a focus on trigeminal neuralgia. We'll conclude with key takeaways to ensure you have a clear understanding of this vital nerve. The trigeminal nerve, recognized as the fifth cranial nerve or CNV, is a major nerve of the face and one of the most complex in the human nervous system due to its mixed sensory and motor functions. It is the largest of the cranial nerves, reflecting its extensive role in conveying sensation and controlling muscle movements. This nerve has a dual composition, consisting of a predominant sensory root and a smaller, yet essential, motor root. The sensory root provides comprehensive innovation to the facial area, enabling the detection of touch, pain, and temperature changes across the face. In parallel, the motor root of the trigeminal nerve supplies the muscles responsible for mastication. The most common pathology associated with the trigeminal nerve is trigeminal neuralgia, a condition characterized by intense facial pain. Additionally, the trigeminal nerve plays a crucial role in local and regional anesthesia, especially in the fields of dentistry and maxillofacial surgery. Let's get started with the nerve's origin. The trigeminal nerve has its origins deeply rooted in the brainstem and the upper spinal cord. It is distinguished by its composition from multiple nuclei. The trigeminal nerve encompasses three distinct sensory nuclei, extending from the midbrain to the medulla, the principal sensory nucleus, situated in the upper pons, this nucleus lies lateral to the motor nucleus. It plays a vital role in processing tactile sensations from the face. The mesencephalic nucleus, unique in its span, it extends through the entire length of the midbrain. This nucleus is integral for proprioceptive functions, helping in the perception of the spatial positioning and movement of facial muscles and joints. The spinal nucleus, stretching from the lower pons into the upper cervical spinal cord, it is responsible for transmitting pain and temperature sensations from the face. Along with these three sensory nuclei, the motor component of the trigeminal nerve originates from a nucleus located in the upper pons, positioned medially and anteriorly to the principal sensory nucleus. It innervates the muscles of mastication, playing a pivotal role in chewing and other jaw movements. The sensory root of the trigeminal nerve, which is notably large, forms by the convergence of fibers emanating from these sensory nuclei. In contrast, the motor root arises separately from the motor nucleus. Now, let's delve into the intricate course of the trigeminal nerve, which begins its journey at the pons and traverses various critical structures within the skull. Both the sensory and motor roots of the trigeminal nerve emerge from the pons. These roots then progress forward, eventually exiting the posterior cranial fossa. Inside the middle cranial fossa, the sensory root undergoes a significant transformation, enlarging to form the trigeminal ganglion. This ganglion serves as a crucial junction where sensory information is relayed and processed, rather than being just a mere enlargement. The ganglion is housed within Meckel's cave, also known as the trigeminal cave. This is a dural diverticulum, essentially a pouch-like extension of the dura mater. It acts as a protective enclosure for both the trigeminal ganglion and the sensory roots of the nerve, safeguarding these critical components from potential damage. The ganglion itself is distinct in its semilunar or crescent shape, with a posterior concavity. From its convex border arise the three major branches of the trigeminal nerve, the ophthalmic, V1, maxillary, V2, and mandibular, V3, nerves. Each of these is responsible for the sensory innovation of different parts of the face. The motor division of the trigeminal nerve follows a separate path. Rather than passing through the ganglion, it runs beneath it. This division joins the mandibular nerve, V3, and exits the intracranial compartment via the foramen ovale, a critical step for its motor functions. This exit strategy allows the nerve to reach and control the muscles of mastication. Before citing the terminal branches of the trigeminal nerve, let's explore its anatomical relationships within the posterior cranial fossa. Below the trigeminal nerve, we find the inferior petrosal sinus, the labyrinthine artery, and the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Above the nerve, the cerebellar tentorium, 
the trochlear nerve, and the superior cerebellar artery are in close proximity. Medially, the trigeminal nerve is related to the basilar artery and the abducens nerve. Laterally, it is closely associated with the facial nerve and the vestibulocochlear nerve. Understanding the relationships of the trigeminal nerve with these structures is immensely important, especially in the context of cranial nerve pathologies, surgical approaches to the brainstem and cerebellum, and comprehending symptoms related to cranial nerve dysfunctions. Let's now focus on the terminal branches of the trigeminal nerve. This nerve is remarkable for its extensive distribution, dividing into three distinct branches. Each branch serves a specific area of the face, providing crucial sensory and, in one case, motor functions. These branches are the ophthalmic nerve, V1, the maxillary nerve, V2, and the mandibular nerve, V3. In the following sections, we'll delve into the unique pathways and roles of each of these branches. Let's start with the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, designated as V1. It is the first and smallest division of the trigeminal nerve. The ophthalmic nerve arises from the superior aspect of the trigeminal ganglion and is exclusively a sensory nerve, meaning it has no motor functions. Its primary role is to convey sensory information from the upper part of the face. After originating from the ganglion, the ophthalmic nerve courses along the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. This positioning is critical as it allows the nerve to traverse securely to its destination without being compressed or damaged by surrounding structures. The nerve then makes its way into the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. Upon entering the orbit, the ophthalmic nerve divides into three major branches, each responsible for innervating specific areas, the lacrimal nerve, the frontal nerve, and the nasociliary nerve. The lacrimal nerve courses along the superior margin of the lateral rectus muscle within the orbit, bringing it in close proximity to the lacrimal gland. This branch innervates the lacrimal gland, upper eyelid, and conjunctiva, playing a crucial role in tear production and providing sensation to these areas. The frontal nerve, the largest branch of the ophthalmic nerve, travels forward along the roof of the orbit, positioned above the levator palpebri superioris muscle. Before dividing into its two terminal branches, it gives off a small branch to the frontal sinus, illustrating its role in providing sensation to the forehead area. Its terminal branches are the supraorbital nerve, which supplies sensation to the forehead and scalp, and the supratrochlear nerve, innervating the skin of the upper eyelid and the area above the nose. Lastly, the nasociliary nerve follows a unique pathway as it passes across the optic nerve, alongside the ophthalmic artery. This nerve bifurcates into the anterior ethmoidal nerve, involved in providing sensation to the nasal cavity and the ethmoidal air cells, and the infratrochlear nerve, which innervates the skin of the medial aspect of the eyelids and the side of the nose. Diving into the second division of the trigeminal nerve, we encounter the maxillary branch, also known as CNV2. This medium-sized branch is exclusively a sensory nerve and plays a crucial role in facial sensation. The maxillary nerve's pathway begins within the middle cranial fossa. It starts its course by exiting the skull through the foramen rotundum, a round opening in the sphenoid bone, marking the transition from the intracranial to the extracranial path of the nerve. Upon leaving the skull, the nerve enters the pterygopalatine fossa. From here, the nerve progresses to the inferior orbital fissure, an important step as it allows the nerve to enter the floor of the orbit. Within the orbit, the maxillary nerve continues as the infraorbital nerve. This segment of the nerve's pathway is crucial as it heads towards the infraorbital foramen. The infraorbital nerve courses forward through the infraorbital canal, a tunnel-like structure in the maxilla, and eventually emerges onto the face via the infraorbital foramen, located just below the orbit. As the terminal branch of the maxillary nerve, the infraorbital nerve is responsible for providing sensory innovation to the mid-face, including the lower eyelids, cheeks, nostrils, upper lip, and the upper teeth and gums. The branches of the maxillary nerve include the zygomatic nerve, superior alveolar nerves, greater and lesser palatine nerves, nasopalatine nerve, pharyngeal branch, and posterior superior nasal branches. Last but not least, let's discuss the third division of the trigeminal nerve, the mandibular branch, known as CNV3. This branch is not only the largest of the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve but also unique due to its mixed sensory and motor functions. 
The mandibular nerve features a short trunk and is divided into three distinct portions, intracranial portion, it begins at the trigeminal ganglion, lies within the skull, and extends to the foramen ovale. Foramen ovale, this juncture is where the nerve transitions from the intracranial to the extracranial space, serving as a passage through which the nerve exits the skull. And an extracranial portion, after passing through the foramen ovale, the nerve enters the infratemporal fossa and splits into two main divisions, each with its branches, the anterior division, primarily motor. This division supplies the muscles of mastication and includes deep temporal nerves that activate the temporalis muscle. Lateral pterygoid nerves which innervate the lateral pterygoid muscle. Masseteric nerve, supplying the masseter muscle. And the buccal nerve, mainly sensory. It provides sensory innervation to the skin over the buccal membrane and is associated with the anterior division. The posterior division, this division primarily carries sensory fibers, with key branches being auriculotemporal nerve, supplying sensory innervation to the ear and temporal region. Lingual nerve, responsible for sensory innervation of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and the floor of the mouth. And the inferior alveolar nerve, a mixed nerve, it provides sensory input to the lower teeth and gums via its terminal branch, the mental nerve, and motor fibers to the mylohyoid and the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. Having covered the anatomy of the trigeminal nerve, let's now delve into its functions and the structures it supplies. We will first focus on the sensory function of the trigeminal nerve. This nerve is primarily responsible for transmitting a wide array of sensations from the face to the brain, including touch, pain, temperature, and proprioceptive sensations. The ophthalmic branch conveys sensory information from the frontal region, which encompasses the forehead and scalp. This branch is crucial for sensing stimuli such as touch and temperature changes in these areas. The maxillary branch is responsible for sensation in the maxillary region. This includes the areas around the cheeks, under the eyes, and the upper lip. It plays an essential role in detecting sensations in these mid-facial areas, contributing significantly to our daily interactions, such as feeling touch on our cheeks or experiencing temperature changes while drinking. Lastly, the mandibular branch provides sensory input from the mandibular region. This region covers the area below the mouth, including the lower jaw and chin. Sensory input from this branch is particularly important for functions like eating and speaking, as it aids in sensing the position of the jaw and contact with food or other objects. The sensory function of the trigeminal nerve is fundamental to our facial experience. It enables us to interact with our environment by sensing a range of stimuli, from the gentlest touch to changes in temperature. This sensory input is also crucial for triggering reflex actions, such as blinking or wincing, and plays a significant role in our overall facial expressions and reactions. After exploring the sensory function of the trigeminal nerve, let's now shift our focus to its motor function. The trigeminal nerve, particularly its mandibular branch, V3, stands out as the only division with motor functions. This aspect of the nerve is essential for various facial and oral functions. The motor fibers originate from the trigeminal nerve's motor root and merge with the mandibular nerve beyond the trigeminal ganglion. This forms a pathway distinct from the sensory fibers. The motor fibers of the mandibular nerve innervate several key muscles, each playing a vital role in facial mechanics, the temporalis, this muscle is crucial for elevating and retracting the mandible, playing a significant role in chewing. The masseter, as one of the primary muscles of mastication, the masseter is vital for jaw closure. The medial and lateral pterygoid, these muscles work together to enable complex movements of the jaw, including side-to-side -side movements and opening the mouth. The tensor vili palatini, this muscle is involved in opening the eustachian tube during swallowing and yawning, helping in equalizing ear pressure. The digastric, anterior belly assists in depressing the mandible, crucial during mouth opening. The mylochioid, elevates the floor of the mouth during the early phase of swallowing. And the tensor tympani, although not involved in mastication, this muscle dampens sounds, such as those produced by chewing, by stabilizing the malleus bone in the middle ear. While the trigeminal nerve is predominantly known for its sensory and motor functions, it also carries parasympathetic fibers. These fibers do not originate from the trigeminal nerve itself but rather accompany its branches, having their origins in the brainstem nuclei. This parasympathetic function is a vital aspect of the trigeminal nerve's role in autonomic control within the facial region. 
The parasympathetic fibers associated with the trigeminal nerve indirectly influence several essential glands, the lacrimal gland, these fibers significantly contribute to tear production, ensuring that the eyes remain moist and protected from irritants. The salivary glands, the parasympathetic fibers innervate the parotid, submandibular, and sublingual glands. They regulate saliva production, which is crucial for digestion, maintaining oral health, and enabling speech. The mechanism of action involves a relay of nerve signals. The parasympathetic fibers initially travel with the glossopharyngeal nerve to the otic ganglion for the parotid gland and with the facial nerve to the submandibular ganglion for the submandibular and sublingual glands. From these ganglia, postganglionic fibers then join branches of the trigeminal nerve to reach their target glands. The parasympathetic function of the trigeminal nerve underscores the interconnected nature of cranial nerves and their complex role in orchestrating a range of autonomic processes. Before we conclude, let's address some clinical correlations of the trigeminal nerve, focusing first on facial anesthesia techniques utilized in various medical and dental procedures. The supraorbital nerve block, this technique involves puncturing the supraorbital foramen, a small notch located above the orbit. When performed bilaterally, it results in the desensitization of the entire forehead and upper eyelids, which is particularly useful in procedures involving the forehead region or for relieving headache pain localized in this area. The infraorbital nerve block, for this block, the infraorbital foramen is punctured. Situated just below the orbit and aligned with the pupil when looking straight ahead, the foramen can be accessed using an extraoral, cutaneous, or intraoral approach, depending on the specific needs of the treatment. Anesthesia from this block affects the lateral part of the nose, the medial part of the cheek, the lower eyelid, and the upper half of the lip, making it essential for surgeries or treatments in the midfacial area. It is often used in dental procedures involving the upper teeth and lip surgeries. The mental nerve block, this block involves puncturing the mental foramen, located on the anterior aspect of the mandible near the lower premolar teeth. The approach can be either intraoral or extraoral, percutaneous, based on the location and extent of the area requiring anesthesia. Anesthesia from this block affects the chin and the lower half of the lip, making it indispensable for procedures involving the lower lip or chin area, such as dental work on the lower teeth. These regional anesthesia techniques target specific branches of the trigeminal nerve to achieve localized numbness in the facial area. They are crucial in various medical and dental procedures for effectively managing pain and minimizing patient discomfort. Proper knowledge of facial anatomy and the course of the trigeminal nerve and its branches is crucial for the safe and effective administration of these anesthetic blocks. Trigeminal neuralgia, often known as tic douloureux, is a condition that represents one of the most significant clinical correlations related to the trigeminal nerve. It's a neurological condition affecting the sensory root of the trigeminal nerve, which is responsible for facial sensation. Patients with trigeminal neuralgia experience episodes of severe, sharp, and shooting pain that are paroxysmal, meaning they occur in sudden, brief, and recurrent spasms. The pain, often described as electric shock-like, can be agonizing for the sufferer. The pain typically lasts from a few seconds to a few minutes and can be triggered by routine facial activities such as shaving, eating, or brushing teeth, making the condition incredibly disruptive to daily life. The intense pain associated with trigeminal neuralgia is usually unresponsive to standard analgesics. The condition is predominantly unilateral, affecting one side of the face. Although less common, it can involve one or more branches of the trigeminal nerve, namely the ophthalmic, maxillary, or mandibular nerves. In conclusion, the trigeminal nerve is an intricate and significant component of the cranial nerves. Recognized as the fifth cranial nerve, it is notably the largest within the human body. It comprises three primary branches, the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular nerves, each of which plays a pivotal role in providing comprehensive facial sensation. The trigeminal nerve is essential for both sensory and motor functions, serving as the main channel for transmitting facial sensations, including touch, pain, and temperature. The mandibular branch, in particular, controls the muscles involved in mastication, underlining its critical role in our capability to chew and process food. Moreover, the trigeminal nerve is closely associated with trigeminal neuralgia, a debilitating condition characterized by intense facial pain, which presents complex challenges in clinical management. 
This nerve's extensive influence on facial function underscores its importance in both neurology and everyday life experiences.